Guys, I don't know what to say. You have to see this yourself. So let me switch the camera real quick and show you what I mean. Okay, what it is? The Mazda 3 series with a 2.2 Sky Active. It is a 13 plate as you can see. And why is it such a big deal? Let me show you. Okay, now you may ask why am I so fascinated about or what am I so fascinated about? Well, everybody can clean his car from outside, from inside, interior wise. So yeah, let me show you one more thing. <laughs> so now let's have a look at the engine bay. Yeah, watch carefully. I mean, this is like brand new. And let me switch one more time the camera and tell you a little bit more. So once you've seen all this, now you may ask the question, if this is so fancy car, it's so nice, so well maintained, why is it here with me? I'll tell you why. Because the owner is so meticulous, so thorough. He wants to have the car perfect. I've already done a test drive. Uh, I drove the same road, the same test circuit as I used to drive. Guys, I managed to drive 68 miles per gallon. I had to translate it to liters per 100 kilometers because I wanted to, I, I was so curious like how much that is. It is 3.4 liters on 100 kilometers. I mean, this one being a 2013 car, it's amazing. It's just mind blowing to me. And like, well, then what's wrong with the car? Um, basically, I would say there is nothing wrong with the car at all. The owner just brought it to me. He is 100 miles away from me. He just got there yesterday, got here yesterday, left the car with me. I'll have two, three days to get the things done. But I'll show you a lot more because uh, this is, I'm, I'm so excited to work on this car and also nervous at the same time because I, I, I'm afraid to touch it because if you, if, you if you see it, it's so clean. Honestly, like I've never seen any like in this condition at this age and I want you to guess the mileage of the car. I won't tell you. I only tell you that this is this has the highest mileage so far, which I was I was I worked on. And tell me what's your guess, like um, from what you've seen, what's your guess, and like how much or what's the mileage of it, and like then what's the actual mileage that you know that I gave you the info, the tip, the hint that it is the highest mileage car I worked on. So yeah, that's one thing. And again, now back to the story. So why it came? It came for the carbon cleaning. An owner also like, uh, not complained, but told that it does the regions quite often. I would say, I think maybe every 60 miles or so, or maybe more. So this one being a 2013 car and like, it has very good consumption, 70 miles. Obviously I didn't, didn't push it too hard or like, I, I do the same. I've done, I've, I've drove the same manner as I, I drove in an, when I te test other cars and the highest I was man able to manage was I think 55-ish uh, MPG. On this one I managed nearly 70. I'll show you in a second. Yeah, so it does quite frequent regions. So obviously it can be the injectors. I don't really think so. That's the worst case if he has, if it's the injectors because it is uh, 400 uh, pounds a piece. Um, well, I think during the time or over the time the dpf may have been like filled up a bit more and it doesn't it cannot clean it as as properly as, as it should so i'll do a dpf clean on it with a spray gun then do a force region and oil change and then the owner will have to monitor like the the frequency of the regions and he will let me know if it helped or not that's the cheapest solution obviously can be done the way then the when the dpf is removed from the car and cleaned it that way that that's a bit more expensive because it takes more work and and the the final solution is to replace the dpf completely or if that won't solve the issue then the injectors are at fault and also uh, the carbon buildup can have effect on the dpf regeneration frequency or filling it up uh, because Imagine if it is um, filled up with carbon, like the intake and the EGR parts, it is getting sucked into the combustion chamber, then out of the, through the intake valves, to the exhaust, and it is filling up the DPF uh, faster and faster. So that can be the thing. Also, I'm not, I didn't make a bet, but I told the owner, like my guess is, I know the mileage, but I told the owner that 
my guess is that it will have like the the build up the carbon build up like the cars with maybe 50,000 miles on the clock by the way the owner owns the car from 5,000 miles it was in his family since the since brand new but he owns it from i think five six thousand miles and he's taking care of it since then it's immaculate so um i've done the test i took it for a test drive because i want to do, do the dpf cleaning first then i'm going to do the carbon cleaning also other jobs will be done such as uh, coolant replacement um drive belt replacement leak down test i'll do a compression test for him as well which i'll explain a little bit later in the video why and how and what else? i'm going to check um if it holds vacuum from the underneath the exhaust pressure sensor because he asked me to do it so i'll do it for him no problem and now let's jump into the car and show you a few data so i'll just talk a little bit more what i noticed and then i'll do the dpf cleaning and then i can start with the carbon cleaning okay so check this out i've done a maybe a 50 mile trip and look at the mpg 68 so i just wanted to show you that it didn't lie and now let me switch the camera so i've done the usual tests i usually do on these engines when when i'm checking the the codes or trouble codes fault codes live data i scanned for codes it doesn't have any codes when on, honestly the owner said like it doesn't have any codes he just want to get it wants to get it done because it was never done he wants to get it done as a mean of a preventive maintenance thing so yeah um i've done the the scan with the scan tool the live data scanning i checked every parameter i usually check um i didn't find anything bad maybe a vacuum pump has higher values i'll record that for him and make note of it um, but that's it the injector correction factors are great very close to zero everything is fine i would say but i'll do another test after the cleaning and after everything so i just wanted to get the car up to temperature so that i can do the the carb uh, sorry the dpf cleaning and then i'll start removing the parts of the intake system and the egr system and get the carbon cleaning done i won't record the process of removal of the parts because i've got other video where i include uh, or where I, where I talk about every bolt and every nut and yeah after that when i'm going to remove the intake manifold i'll record that because i want to show you how it is looking like and i'm really curious too so i want you to see it firsthand um, but yeah basically that's it and now let me get the tpf cleaning done so just a quick tip or a heads up how the dpf cleaning is working so i've got the gun hooked up to the air to the compressor filled up with the cleaning fluid and connected to the um exhaust sorry the yeah the exhaust pressure differential sensor so this is the sensor i removed it it has a 10 millimeter bolt from this side and a 10 millimeter nut from other side so i removed the two bolts and nuts and disconnected it this pipe so this is the pre dpf so it goes before the dpf as you can see i pulled it off and i spray i leave the car for for the first like when i start it i leave it i didn't i don't turn on the engine spray it there i don't know in five second interval spray i don't know maybe two three sprays and then let it sit for five minutes then i turn on the engine let it idle and then i'll spray the rest in five second interval so spray five seconds uh, rest it for five seconds spray it so five seconds rest it for five seconds then when i'm once i'm done with all this um turn i turn on the car monitor the light data the differential pressure sensor readings or values and keep the revs around two two and a half thousand rpm so i can get everything out of the exhaust system the the cleaning fluid and then i'm going to do a forced region and once i'm done i'm start i'll start with the carbon cleaning but if you don't do the carbon cleaning after the forced region get the oil changed because it will um, pu push or press or like uh, inject extra fuel to the oil and it will dilute your oil so that's it that's how you do the dpf cleaning So now I have rev revved the car for at 2000 half RPM for I don't know maybe 5 10 minutes and while monitoring the differential pressure of exhaust gas and as you can see it is jumping between 
it gets up to maximum 0.6 so that is uh, 6 millibar but on average it has i would say 3 millibars which is single digit number very good and let's check it at two and a half thousand rpm it should be a bit uh, below four so four uh, 40 millibar and yeah let me rev it it's yeah two and a half thousand and it is below four so that is okay and now i'm going to start the fourth region it will take i don't know maybe 40 minutes till then i'll show you maybe a few more things what the owner brought me or what the owner told me about the car so the car is regenerating now the fourth region is started if you do the same don't be afraid if you will, if you will smoke like they are electing the new pop it is absolutely normal um but what has been done to the car the owner got the uh, injector washer changed the top end got uh, cleaned he replaced he got replaced the oil strainer what i know about only thing what hasn't been done so far is the carbon cleaning and the um, timing chain so yeah that's the two things remaining to get done if the timing chain will ever need to be changed um but yeah other than that that's it and I'll show you what kind of parts he brought me because he brought all the gaskets for the job so exhaust manifold gaskets uh, sorry EGR gaskets and the intake uh, manifold gaskets and everything so yeah he's quite uh, meticulous I would say and I dare to say it cost him maybe 200 pounds just in parts alone in, in gaskets I mean but I'll, I'll show you what kind of uh, stuff he brought to me and yeah that's it so once the region is done then i'll start to disassemble the car the egr parts and the intake parts and start uh, the walnut blasting so we arrived where we want it to be so now the last thing we have has to be done is to remove the intake manifold so i'm going to hand the phone over to my father and you can see not in real time but in like when it was done so i didn't alter the video anyway anyways so you can see it when i remove it how much carbon it will have after the mileage the car has done which you have to guess down in the comment section still because i won't tell you only after you watch the video and i see your guesses